Hey everyone, my name is Chris, and welcome back to the Rideshare Hub. If you're new here, the Rideshare Hub is a channel all about being a better rideshare driver and making some money. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming back. Before we get into the video, if you're interested in becoming a Lyft or Uber driver and you want to get a sign-on bonus, use the links in the description below to sign up. Alright, today's video is 10 tips for driving at night with Uber and Lyft and how it is different from driving during the day. Now, I almost exclusively drive at night. I have driven during the day, and it is definitely different. Uh, it just depends on what's going on uh, for the most part. But the way people are acting, what they're doing, uh, events that are going on, a lot of different things are happening uh, at night versus the day. Uh, so here's 10 tips that you can follow to make night driving more smooth. So number one, have a plan. Drive where you want, no spots where you want to avoid, and then avoid those spots. Uh, if you know that are, certain events are going on, if you know uh, certain bar districts get busy at certain times, uh, if you're in a rural area that you don't want to be in a rural area, um, you know, wherever you are, if you want to be there, make sure you're there. If you don't want to be there, you know, go offline real quick, drive to that spot uh, or put on your set location to that to go to that spot uh, and drive back to where you want to drive. Number two, know what time you want to drive until. So if you have work during the day or if you have obligations in the following morning uh, or whatever it might be, you want to make sure you get home, get enough sleep so you can take on the, the day, the following day. Uh, and you also don't want to be driving too late where you're just going to get tired and fall asleep. Uh, so you want to know what time you're going to drive to and stick to that pretty good. Uh, number three, make sure you have enough energy and are well rested. Coffee and energy drinks can be great, uh, but the best is really making sure you eat properly and getting enough sleep. That's going to give you the best energy and it's going to make sure you go throughout the night pretty well. Uh, if you've driven for the night and you've gone till three, four, five in the morning, uh, you know that uh, it'll start wearing on you after time, especially if you wake up earlier in the day. Um, so just make sure you get enough sleep, you're eating properly. Uh, and like I say, coffee and energy drinks can be good, uh, but when they are done and you get that crash, it can come a little bit harder. Uh, so you just want to make sure you listen to yourself and you know what's going on. Uh, number four, go offline if you're feeling tired. You know, take a break, grab a cup of coffee, walk around for a minute, you know, just get your energy back up. Uh, and if you can't do that, just head home. You know, you got to listen to yourself. So if you didn't reach that time that you wanted to drive till because you were too tired, you know, head home. <laughs> just be safe. Uh, you don't want to get into an accident or something or cause a problem because you were too tired and driving. Uh, you want to make sure that you're driving safe and uh, also driving with energy. All right, number five, know the events that are going on in your area. Uh, when you know the events that are going on in your area, you're going to make more money. Uh, definitely with the larger events too, like if it's a hockey game, a football game, whatever it might be, uh, or a college game, uh, or just whatever's going on that might be a bigger event. Uh, maybe a, a comedian that comes into the area that's a, a large event, uh, somebody who's doing a talk, uh, whatever it could be, know those events that are going on in your area, and it's going to give you better chance at getting more rides. Uh, some of these larger events will definitely have primetime pricing and surge pricing that are going to be happening with it. Uh, so it's going to make more money in your pocket, uh, which is always a great thing. And again, with the larger events, uh, you also have a good chance at taking a longer ride. So if you take that 30 minute ride that is a normal price, uh, it's still a good ride. Or even if you add surge or prime time pricing, it's really going to make you uh, have a little bit more money. And the best thing is most events are happening at night. So they'll start at, say, you know, seven, eight, nine, whatever it is in, at night. Uh, and then they end usually around 10, 11 uh, for the most part. And then usually people are going to the bars and then, you know, they got to go home after that. So depending on your area, you know, if, if your bars close at 2 a.m., you know, you're, you're pretty much strong going through 2 a.m. 
Uh, in Buffalo, they close at four. So we have, you know, a lot of people who go home at two and then you have another round of people who are going home at four. Uh, so you definitely want to know your events going on around the area and the nights that are happening. So like a tip, uh, for Thursday is Thursday, Thursday, uh, where a lot of college bars or college, uh, students love to go out and drink. Uh, so that's just a little tip that you can do is stick around college campuses, uh, and take people on Thursdays, go to, go into different parties and, uh, bars and clubs. Uh, but yeah, definitely know the events that are going on. Number six, know the bar districts and how traffic flows in those areas at those times. Bar districts are unique because you're going to have a lot of foot traffic. You're going to have a lot of vehicle traffic and they're over a few blocks. So they're going to be very busy versus the rest of the area. Um, and you're going to have a lot of people who are drinking. So they're going to be doing a lot of stupid things. So they might be falling over. So you definitely want to know how traffic flows, both pedestrian uh, and sidewalk traffic, as well as uh, car traffic. Uh, the big thing that you want to know is have spots where you can pick up and drop off people safely, depending on those pick up and drop off locations. Like I said, bar districts usually go over a few blocks. Uh, so if you have one bar at one end of the bar district and you're at the other end, uh, that's not going to work well. So you want to make sure you know where the bars are and then go to a spot that's close to them that you can give them a call and let them know where you are exactly. So it's going to be safe for them to get to you, and it's going to be uh, safe for you not blocking traffic. And that's a huge thing right there is don't block traffic uh, in the middle of the road to drop off or pick people up. Uh, first, it's not safe. Uh, people who are getting in and out of the vehicle could get hit. Uh, it's a good chance at that, so you don't want to do that. Make sure you can pull off to the side of the road or side street or something and let those people off or pick them up. Also, many cops are walking up and down the road to make sure everybody's safe, nothing's happening, uh, and they want to keep a good presence. But they will target Uber and Lyft drivers who are blocking traffic, and they will pull you over and they will ticket you. So Definitely avoid that by knowing your bar districts and knowing places where you can go to pick people up safely and drop them off safely. Right, number seven, have a musical playlist that's going to be more upbeat and kind of like what they're going to play at clubs and events. Uh, it's, you want more upbeat music. Everybody who's going out is going to be much more upbeat. Uh, they're not going to work. They're not coming home from work. So they're not going to be, you know, focused on that or, or sad that they're going to work. Uh, they're going out, they're going to have fun. Uh, they're going to be enjoying their events they're going to. Uh, so music is a huge thing that can elevate mood uh, or take away mood. So you want to make sure you have a playlist that's going to be more upbeat uh, and something that's going to be played in clubs or events. Number eight, get ready to chat with people. You know, people are much more talkative at night because like I just said before, you know, people who are going to and from work, uh, they're not as talkative because they're probably not too happy they're going to work uh, and they're probably tired coming home from work. So when people are actually going out to bars, they're going to clubs, they're going to events, they're coming home from that, you know, they're having a good time. They're letting themselves enjoy. Uh, so they're going to want to be more chatty. Uh, if there's a group of people and you chat with them uh, or you can listen to what they're saying, but just be prepared to chat with people. So if you're introverted or you don't like talking to people, uh, you kind of got to make sure you know that you're going to chat with people. Uh, so, uh, maybe nighttime driving wouldn't be for you, but if you do drive at night, just be in that mode that you're going to be ready to talk and you could talk with anybody and everybody. Um, or you might not talk to anybody. It just depends, but more likely you're going to drive at night and want to talk to, or people are going to want to talk with you. Number nine, stay alert. This is a big one. Uh, first, you want to stay alert within your vehicle. So that means how passengers are. You know, are they intoxicated? Are they belligerent? Are they um, doing anything that seems out of the ordinary? You know, is there anything that's going on in your vehicle that you are getting uncomfortable with? Uh, you got to make sure you're in control. So you want to stay alert and know what's going on. If there's seemingly like something's out of the ordinary, you know, that's when you got to start 
figuring out if you're going to take action or not. Um, so you definitely want to know that. Now you want to also stay alert on the exterior of vehicle. Uh, driving at night, you pose a greater risk at coming in contact with people who are drinking and driving. Uh, so you want to stay aware of your surroundings uh, and make sure that vehicles around you aren't acting erratically uh, or swerving or anything like that. And if they are, avoid them at all costs uh, by either staying behind them, turning to a different location or taking a different route, uh, whatever it might be, but you definitely want to avoid them. And when you're at the bar districts, you really got to pay attention to people who are walking around, uh, who are getting in and out of vehicles, because there are a lot of people who will get in and out of the vehicles in the middle of the road. So you definitely want to make sure you uh, avoid that by staying alert and you don't hit somebody accidentally. Uh, so that's definitely a big thing. Stay alert and stay in control. Number 10, have fun. Like I was saying earlier as well, you know, people are going out, they're going to events, they're going to bars, they're going to clubs, they're coming home from that. So they just had a great night. Uh, they're having fun. They're in a great uh, mentality and a great mindset. So you're going to have much more fun too, because you're going to feed off of them. They're going to feed off you. So enjoy it. Have some fun. And here's a bonus tip. <laughs> Get some puke bags. Uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. Uh, you know, if a passenger seems really intoxicated and sick, ask how they're feeling and if they need to pull over to, to go outside, tell them to let you know to pull over right away. Uh, either way, you just want to have those puke bags in case uh, because if they don't tell you and something happens, you know, it's going to be confined to that bag versus your vehicle. Uh, and you don't want to go through that headache right there. So it's definitely great to have that. All right, so those are 10 tips that you can use, plus a bonus tip uh, for driving more smooth at night uh, and a couple of differences as well. So any drivers who are driving at night, you know, what are some comments uh, that you have? Uh, what are some tips that you do? You know, comment below, let us know. Thank you everyone for watching. Again, if you're interested in becoming a Lyft or Uber driver, use the links in the description below and make sure to subscribe if you want to see some more videos like this one. Also, check out my channel, Real Ride Share Stories, where we show actual ride share rides that happen. And this has been another episode of the Ride Share Hub. See you next time.